the rest of the story. What's now the city of Seattle, Washington? In 1853, was no more than a few staked claims in the woods. That was the year Henry Yesler arrived. Henry said, what this land needs is a sawmill. And he proposed to build one at the bottom of a hill right on the waterfront. Of course, he'd need a log run, a channel cut through the woods by which timber could be transported from the hilltop to the mill. Two local pioneers, Doc Mayward and Carson Boren, offered the dividing line of their properties. So Henry was in business. He built his house and his steam-powered sawmill right down by the water's edge at the bottom of the hill. He cut an access route from the mill to the hilltop right on his neighbor's property line. It was a steep incline, made log transportation from the top to the bottom much easier. Henry actually smeared grease on the pathway so the logs almost slid by themselves. Nobody remembers precisely when Henry stopped using the log slide, about 1870, I would think. Thereafter, it became Mill Street, and then Yesler Way, in honor of town miller Henry Yesler, who contributed so much to the city's economy. Lumber remained Seattle's principal source of income. San Francisco, several hundred miles to the south, kept burning down, so they kept rebuilding with wood from Seattle. Then in 1896, gold was discovered in the Klondike, and the Alaskan gold rush was on. The prospectors swarmed in the Northwest. The Alaskan gold rush was unprecedented. Money poured into Seattle. Yesler Way, once a slide for mill-bound logs, bustled as never before. There has always been something a little risque about Yesler Way. Even back in the 1860s, when the logs were still descending the hill on their bellies, there was a boarding house near the bottom uh, where the street sign said, Madam Damnable. Seattle's turn-of-the-century gold wealth added glitter to the naughty, bawdy backdrop. Problem was, Seattle overbuilt in its prosperity delirium, and when the bottom dropped out of the economy a decade later, when the Depression swept the city, it left a lot of empty buildings and a lot of broken dreams on Yesler Way. Seattle had been all dressed up. Now suddenly there was no place to go. And Yesler Way reflected the desolation as no other street in the city. The down-and-outers still sleep in doorways there, still do, still shuttle the unswept sidewalks beneath the signs that read condemned. The old avenue down the hill that fell from glitter to the gutter never quite got on her feet again, still haunted by forgotten men who can't forget her real name. For the Yesler way of yesterday was Mill Street, named because it led to Henry Yesler's mill. But before that, it was named something else. In reference to the sliding logs that comprised its original traffic, today it's Yesler Way, just another boulevard of broken dreams. And yet way back when, in the pioneer days, that downhill log-run pathway had a name by which a thousand slum streets in a thousand cities would someday be called. You see, Yesler Way, the greased path down which the logs once skidded on their way to Yesler's mill, was our nation's first, was the original skid road. Skid road. Now you know the rest of the story.